exporting. Exporting is huge in the fact that you have to understand where you're going to go with this stuff. Right now I have a 1920 by 1080 P variation of a video. Okay, so that means it'll play on a HD TV. Good. Always want that. It'll play on YouTube. It's good for archival purposes. And now what happens is what if I wanted to go to any of those like YouTube, archival purposes, whatnot. What if you wanted to take the video and put it on your PSP? or maybe your iPhone or iPad. Well, those are all other things and you have to know what your audience and what your export is. In the fact that now, let's just say I want from here to here. This is my work area. And I can go File, Export, Media. Well, if you look, I have 14 minutes of this and it's 55 megs. I can say entire sequence and now it's 5 gigs. Okay, so I definitely want work area. Now, in my humble opinion, uh, there are a million codecs and each codec either stipulates how much compression or how much ruining capabilities of the video is. Um, so compression on video is just me compressing it down to fit on a smaller scale. So instead of 55 megs, I could squish that down to 5 megs if I wanted to, but that means it's going to look bad. So I'm going to give you a common general codec that I use all the time. It's called H.264. But no, there's a lot of these. So clicking on here gives me FLV, JPEG, MP3, like two blu-ray all oh, blu-rays got to be good right and the fact that maybe not it's it's okay but mpeg 2 and mpeg 4 again there's a lot of these mpegs there's no standardization of file types so this is the hardest thing for a student to understand and newcomer to understand i've been doing this for quite some time as far as video and video editing and i will say that h264 has lived up to its standard and it's kind of the, the codec used most often on the internet. Uh, when you're shipping it over to YouTube, it stays pretty clear. Okay, well, how do I know that? In numbers terms, look at this. H.264 with the preset of HD 1080p, 29 frames per second, high quality, will give me this. 1920 by 1080 output and here's my input but if I was to switch this over to like 720 look what happens my 1920 is now reduced to 1280 by 720 sometimes this shifting of numbers will lead to a very large quality loss and some kind sometimes very unexpected frame results so what I like to do is stay true to the frame if it's 1920 I'm going to export it as 1920 and if I'm uploading to YouTube, I'll let YouTube decide what they want to do with it. So here's where I name it, and I can call this final. Notice I have video files, but it only gives me MP MPEG-4. And if I'm not sure about video or audio is concerned, all I know that NTSC is us as Americans and PAL as everybody else. <laughs> so here's the frame width. If it doesn't say 1920 by 1080, you did something wrong. So if you need to refresh that or you messed it up, um, you can type it in. Because if you mouse over it and then accidentally wheel mouse up, it'll change. Notice it stays in relationship with each other. Audio. In this case, AAC is very good. It's a nice codec for audio. So anytime it's concerned with high quality, no high quality means high quality video and audio. All right, now I can hit Q. And what this is gonna do is launch it over to Adobe Media Encoder, where you seen earlier I rendered a pre-comp out. Well, now if I need to render the final, 
it was just a different story. I didn't need to match my settings. This time, you can see it's an MPEG-4, not an MPEG. The difference between the two is compression. So an MPEG has less compression on it, in this case, and an MPEG-4 has a little bit more with the H.264. Again, if I'm speaking Greek, it's okay. Um, there's a lot of stuff you still need to learn about this stuff. And, you know, this is just an example of exporting. So, there we go. Now I have an MPEG-4 ready for YouTube. And that is exporting in Premiere, in a nutshell. Enjoy. Let's go on to the next video.